very often we're going to want to find the probability that something happens or something else happens. And for that, we're going to need the OR theorem. So let's go back to PowerPoint, and I'm going to draw a picture. So let's say we have two events, and this time I'm going to make them not mutually exclusive. And so you'll see that indicated by the fact that there's overlap between A and B. So how do we find the chance that either A or B or both of those events occur? Well, we need the OR theorem. This is the OR theorem. So it's just the probability of A plus the probability of B less their intersection. So let's, um, let's just see how this works. So if we want to find A or B, we start out with the probability of A. Then I add B to that. Now I've got a little problem because if I add the probability of B, I have counted the stuff in the middle twice. And that stuff in the middle is A and B. Therefore, we have to subtract that piece off up here. So if I want to know the, the total probability of A or B, what I'm going to do is add A to B and then lop off the intersection, which has been double counted. All right, moving on. Conditional probability. So conditional probabilities are one of the most important ideas in all of marketing. So we've already been using conditional probabilities. We used them last week when we studied cross tabs. And the, the notion of a conditional probability is that you've been given an extra piece of information. So we're not just interested in whether A will occur. We are, um, we're told that um, you know, event B has already occurred, and now we want to know uh, what's the chance that A occurs. So let's go back to PowerPoint for a second, and uh, let's, um, let's draw this out. So here's the same picture that we had before. A and B are events, and they have some overlap. Conditional probabilities say this. Restrict your attention restrict your universe only to events that uh, are, are in B. Um, here's the symbol for conditional probability. It's, it, you use this vertical bond symbol and you pronounce this the probability of A given B. So given B means restrict your universe to B. So we no longer care about the entire sample space. We only care about what's happening inside this B. And so what conditional probabilities are all about uh, is saying how big is this overlap region relative to B. So how are we going to do this? Well, it's just a matter of taking how big is this overlap area. The overlap area is the probability that A and B are both occurring. And then seeing how big that is relative to to B. So that's why it's just the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. So as I say, it's one of the most important issues in, in all of marketing. So uh, for example, if I tell you that this banner ad is being displayed on the New York Times website, uh, does that, uh, you know, what's the chance of a, a click? As opposed to if this banner ad is on ESPN.com, what is the chance of a click? So you're being told information about the hosting website and you're interested in the probability of a click. So um, these, uh, you know, the, 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 this could be a really important tool for us. Now, a closely related concept is independence. So what independence means is that when you, when you have two events and information that one event has occurred does not change your evaluation that the other one will occur. So let's go back to PowerPoint for a second and let's just um, actually you know I, I completely forgot to give you an example of conditional probability so let's let's do that and then we'll come back to independence. So let's say that we pick some card at, at random from a well shuffled deck of cards. What's the chance of a heart? Well if, we, uh, if it's well shuffled, that means that every card is equally likely to come up. There are 13 hearts, and there's 52 cards. So we can conclude that the probability of just getting a heart is 1 out of 4. Now, let's say we take a card, but we don't look at it. You take a card, you don't look at it. I look at it. 
I look at it and I say, I'm going to give you an extra piece of information. And that extra piece of information is that the card is red. Now, how does this change your evaluation of whether, um, whether the card is a heart? Well, let's try our formula. So in symbols, what we're going to do is say, what is the probability that the card is a heart given that it is red? Well, if we think about all the red cards, there's 13 red cards in a deck of cards. You have 13 hearts, you have 13 diamonds. And 13 of the uh, 26, uh, so, so there are 26 red cards, 13 of which are hearts, so the probability uh, is, a, is a half. Now let's use our other formula. So what's the probability of a red card and a heart divided by the probability of a red card? Well, 13 over 52 divided by 26 over 52. Uh, which is a half. All right, so notice that this extra piece of information, you know, the card is a is red, changes our evaluation as to whether it is a heart. Well, let's move on to independence. So as I indicated a, a minute ago, A and B are independent means that information about some other uh, information that B has occurred doesn't change the evaluation of whether or not A will occur. So we write this in symbols as follows. You know, the chance that A occurs given that I tell you B has occurred is still the probability of A. So information about B doesn't change our evaluation about A. You can flip the two around if you want. So if I tell you A has occurred, that does not change your evaluation of whether or not B will occur. There's a third way to express this, and that is that the probability that both A and B occur is just the product of the two individual probabilities. So the way to um, think about this is that, you know, this if and only if business means that, okay, if they're independent, then all three of these things occur. Likewise, if any one of these occur, then the other two occur, and you can also conclude that they're independent. Now let's think about the opposite. So if any of these statements are false, then we say that A and B are dependent on each other. So for example, if the um, overall probability that I get a, a click on a banner ad is say 1%, um, but if I tell you this is on the New York Times website and you observe a click-through rate of 2%, well then uh, clicking is dependent on the hosting website. So the way to think about this is knowing that B has occurred changes your evaluation of whether or not uh, A will occur, so the probability of A. Let's do a little example. I'm going to take two coins out of my pocket, and both are fair. What can happen? Well, there are four possible outcomes. I take these two coins out, I throw them in the air. Um, either they're both heads. The first one's a head, the second one's a tail. First one's a tail, second one's a head, or they're both tails. Each one of these has a probability of one-fourth. Now, suppose that I take them uh, out of my pocket, I flip them in the air, and I only look at uh, coin one, and I tell you coin one came up heads. So does this change your evaluation of whether coin two is a head? Well, just intuitively, uh, you'd say, no, it shouldn't. And the reason that your intuition tells you this, is that one coin has no impact on the other coin. It's not like these coins are communicating with each other. Uh, so, you know, since they're, they don't affect each other, they're independent. Well, if, um, if that's the case, our independence formula should work. So, um, the, the um, chance of a head with coin 2 is unaffected by this additional piece of information that I've given you. So let's just check this with the formulas. What's the chance that coin two is a head, given this extra piece of information that coin one is a head? Well, using our formula, a conditional probability formula, it's the joint probability. That has probability one fourth. What's the probability that coin one comes up heads? Well, one half. So uh, one fourth divided by one half is one half. And notice that one half is just the probability that uh, coin two comes up heads. So the point here is that this conditional probability is unchanged. So the probability that H2 comes up is unchanged by knowing that H1 comes up. Therefore, they are independent. 
Um, that's the end of this video. Um, you now want to watch the uh, next video that will introduce cross tabs to you.